Hey, Stevie Nunn here at Burnison Auto Wrecking doing the junkyard crawl in Burnison, Massachusetts with a 1962 Chevy C60 Apache. Now, a lot of folks say the Chevy 409 and 348 engines were born to be truck engines. Well, it's true and it's not. Um, they could be had in trucks as big as this, but they were also, of course, used in Impalas and Biscaynes and Bel Airs. The Beach Boys sang about them. She's real fine, my 409. Well, this is a 1965 uh, or 6 edition of Fleet Owner magazine right here. And inside is a piece on the all new Chevy uh, truck. And again, we see here a Series T800 with the 409 gas engine right there. Now the truck 409 is buildable for hot rod automotive use. The only thing it does have some deep scallops at the top of the cylinder bores that make it harder to get over 10 to one compression. But again, 409s were absolutely available in big trucks through 1966, although they went away in cars in 65. Now, do we have a 409 in this one here? It's possible. It's a C60, it's heavy enough. They didn't put the 409s in half tons or three quarters. They had to be big, big trucks like this one. Just, drum, just roll that drum, drum that roll, or give that drum roll, whatever you want to call it. And Okay, well, yeah, this is a 1962. So this is the Chevy Stove Bolt 6 in its final year. Now we know this engine also powered the Corvette, believe it or not, but this one is a 261 cubic inch version of the Stove Bolt 6. And why do they call it the Stove Bolt? We look here on the passenger side, and we see on the side, this is the access plate right here for the lifters to set, uh, to access the, the lifters. And the cover on that side has these little flat pan head bolts right there also known as stove bolts, and believe it or not, that is where the Stove Bolt 6 got its name. And this engine first came along around 1937. And uh, in fact, 1929 was the first year for Chevy overhead, uh, uh, overhead valve pushrod 6. But again, the Stove Bolt 6, commonly seen in mid-50s Chevys and right up till 1962 in trucks. Now, 63, the 292 would replace this. And again, we see here an a generator, which means, yes, 1962. 63, the alternator would replace that. So this truck must have been pretty slow in its day, again, with that 261 cubic inch inline six. Now this is a Chevrolet, and the fact that it has uh, two headlights tells us it's a 60, two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, 60 and 61 had four headlights on the Chevy pickups and trucks like this one. Uh, but again, something that may, lets us know for sure, it's a 60 through 62 are the torsion bar front suspension items. Check this out. Now we, we know that 1960, 61, and two Chevy pickup trucks, two wheel drives had torsion bar front suspension. It's true. Well, so too did all Chevy trucks all the way up to the C80. This is torsion bar suspension. Here's this torsion bar right here, anchored at the back, and it twists with the upper control arm. Now this is a forging right here, heavy duty stuff. Here are the kingpins right here, big drum brake. But again, torsion bars were used on all 1960 through 62 Chevy two wheel drive trucks, all the way up to the C80 Spartan, which had a uh, 80,000 or 9,000 pound GVW. The beauty of the torsion bar suspension theoretically was that it was lighter uh, than a beam axle and leaf springs. It was also had less turning friction uh, and gave a better ride. But the downside was that it was easily knocked out of alignment and truck drivers and trucking companies didn't like trucks that wore out tires. And that was one of the problems. The alignment on these things was easily disturbed, especially on dump trucks. And yes, you could actually get a C C80 Spartan uh, dump truck with this independent Front suspension, which you know, first time you took it off road into a gravel pit and bounced around, you probably had it out of alignment. So, 1962 was the year that Chevrolet kind of cried uncle and they offered an available leaf spring beam axle as an alternate to this torsion bar deal. In 1963, this was gone. And in fact, on Chevy pickup trucks, the torsion bar was also gone. They went to coil springs uh, on the uh, Chevy pickup trucks up front for the light duty trucks, and of course, the beam axle on big stuff like this. So this is, uh, again, it's a this one is a 1962, and uh, next to last year for the wraparound windshield, which was 60 through 63. 1964, more flat windshield. In fact, the pickup truck cab and this are pretty much identical. The hood is almost identical to the pickup truck stuff. Inside, well, you know, it's a gas burner. Here's the gas tank behind the seat in the cab. The filler's right here, just like a pickup truck. Uh, not the safest thing on the world, but again, this is, uh, you know, it's a work truck and the uh, instrument cluster is gone. This would have had a four speed or maybe a five speed manual transmission. And uh, this one has pretty well been ravaged by rust. And if you want to see world class rust come to Massachusetts, look at the A pillar right here. The uh, gauge of the metal was 
cooked through by uh, corrosive action right here down to paper thin and basically the roof collapsed on itself. In fact, the skin of the roof is long gone. So the junkyard is kind of a classroom. It gives us a nice opportunity to look at the x-ray vision or the view inside of the double roof construction of the Chevy cab. Of course, the outer skin would have come up here. It's been sliced away. This is the inner skin right here. In fact, this surface right here is what you'd see looking up at the headliner, this ribs from up inside. And again, this is uh, the curved glass on this one here was used uh, 60 through 63. Um, so yeah, these cabs, these trucks, interesting stuff. But again, torsion bar front suspension on 9,000 GBW pound trucks. Now keep in mind that these trucks were available in C10 through C40 as the Apache and the C50 through C60 as the Viking and the big dogs. The C70 and C80s were called Spartans. Now this one here being a C60 would have been a Viking and uh, the top of the top of the range again C50 and C60 were the Viking, the two of them. Uh, this one could have been had with a 409 or a 348 but this one has the basic uh, 261 cubic inch uh, stove bolt so 1962, final year for torsion bars, final year for the 261. Um, but something kind of cool about this one here is the oil delivery uh, body on this one. To see this, check out the next video. This is the second of a two-part video called the Torsion Bar Tanker. In the last video, we showed how this 1962 Chevy C60 oil delivery truck has torsion bar front suspension, which is something that Chevrolet trucks from the C10 all the way to the 9,000 GBW pound C80 had. Check that out. 1963, that went away in favor of beam axles and leaf springs. Trouble with that was it gave you a good ride, but it also went out of alignment real easy. And trucking companies hate wearing out tires. So that was gone by 63, but here it is on this truck. Now the door is marked C.M. Dean, Berninston, Mass. So C.M. Dean must have been the owner of this oil delivery company. Now, you gotta remember that up till about 1860 or so, oil in this country basically was whale oil. It was used for lubrication, for lighting, but in about the 1860s, 1870s, in Pennsylvania and California, we discovered dinosaur oil in the ground, mineral-based oil. And by uh, 1900, you know, oil was rivaling coal in heating homes. And by 1910, Standard Oil in California started using trucks to deliver oil, replacing horses. So by 1962, the, uh, the science of uh, delivering oil was, was well ironed out in trucks like this. Now, this truck has a gas tank inside of the cab, which is a little funky. Again, this is a 261 cubic inch inlet line six. And speaking of tanks, look at this. Again, we see the CM Dean logo kind of burned into the side, but this is a great example of how home heating oil was delivered to people's houses until the mid 1970s when steel construction gave way to aluminum construction. Uh, the trouble with steel, of course, is in a rollover or a crash. This stuff makes sparks. You get a fire. Aluminum is far less likely to create sparks. In fact, it doesn't create sparks. But you, if you want, climb up on top over there, Shane, and let's look inside of this tanker here. Now, tanker vehicles, of course, we know they, they travel with heavy loads of liquid inside, which is prone to surging. So that's why this is divided into two tanks. In fact, that also gives uh, the operator the ability to have two different grades of home heating oil or whatever kind of liquids. But inside of these here. Now this hatch we see here, it says uh, it's cast iron. It's almost like a submarine hatch, but it says Philadelphia Valve Company right there, this cast iron lid. And uh, there's some viewpoints or viewports, I think, right here and vents. So let's lift it up. Uh, okay. Hello. Hello. Like that echo. But if you look inside, you'll see those V-shaped forms right there. Those are baffles to prevent the oil from surging. When the truck accelerates or goes up a hill, instead of all that oil rushing to the back and maybe causing a wheel stand, that V-shaped uh, structure inside, which is welded in place permanently, uh, diverts the oil left and right and breaks up that momentum. So again, the science of these things is more than meets the eye. And speaking of that, this raised area here around the, uh, the filler uh, openings is here so that in the event this thing goes upside down, the uh, tops of these things don't get scrubbed off as this thing rolls down the road. So these are a safety thing that was mandated. Again, these walls, they're pretty rugged stuff. But again, this is a steel tanker. And these were the rule um, starting around 1910. Before that, wood was used with you know, horse-drawn trailers. But again, the steel was uh, phased out in the mid-70s in favor of aluminum, which is more expensive and lighter, um, but doesn't spark and cause fires. And especially with gasoline delivery, aluminum is mandatory. Uh, but again, here at the back, it's kind of cool. What we have is 
the flow meter. Now these right here are handles with cables. You pull them up like that and these actually run underneath the, the tank and open gravity fed valves which then flow the oil into this device right here. So as the oil makes its way through, this reads the amount of flow. So you know how many gallons you've sold to Mrs. O'Malley or to Mr. Um, Hendricks or whatever it might be. But again, it's cool to see this is the original uh, structure here. Now, uh, in the back, that six volt battery, we can see it's a six volt, it's got three vents versus uh, uh, six on a 12 volt, but that runs this electric motor right here. And what does that do? Well, it operates this hose. This is the deliver delivery hose right here, which you would, uh, you know, retract or reel out in order to fill oil into the home heating tank of a house. And this is the nozzle right here, which feeds down into the receiver on the home heating tank. It's your 250 gallon thing. I've got two of these in my cellar, uh, the tanks, and uh, they're about a thousand bucks a piece to fill now that we're at war in Russia, etc. But with that said, uh, this nozzle is made by a company that says Scully Nozzle. And in fact, the Scully Nozzle company is located, the headquarters in Wilmington, Massachusetts. In fact, in fact, uh, Scully is one of the leaders in uh, dispensing nozzles, and in fact, they have headquarters, uh, in, again, in Wilmington, Mass., but they have outlets in uh, Great Britain, uh, Asia, and uh, a national corporation located right here in Mass. Now, here's the thing. If that battery goes dead, what do you do? Well, you got the old-fashioned handle right here. You put this puppy, there's a, there's a little slot, and you put this onto that, and you got the manual override. So. <laughs> It's, uh, you're all set either way on uh, delivering the oil, you know, like, like the uh, post office, come rain or snow or sleet or fire, whatever, you gotta deliver the oil because people don't like being cold. I don't, I know that for sure. Now around the side here, again, we see the uh, CM Dean logo burnt out and you have to imagine that CM Dean, he may, they may even still be around. It says Burniston, Massachusetts on the door. So we're in Burniston now. So a local company, uh, they may or may not still be around. I don't know. But anyway, this uh, again, 62 C60 truck Chevy with a dual tire, single rear axle. And this is a good example here of a full floating axle. You might say, what's wrong with that thing? Well, there's an axle shaft, which is a T head, which is spline, which fits in here as a cap. You take that out. And it's called a full floating axle. What that means is there are bearings on the outside and the inside and the axle itself, the axle shaft, the drive axle floats and can be removed without the wheel coming off of the truck. So again, uh, whether that was taken out to access the, the rear axle or maybe to roll it more easily, don't know. But there it is right there, full floating. In fact, Ford and Chevy and Dodge F250 and you know three quarter ton trucks have full floating axles in you know, three quarter scale. This is a pretty big one right here, but as big you know, 18 wheelers go and stuff, this is pretty small. They can be really big, but that's a full floater right there. So here we have it right here, the uh, end of the line for CM Dean's 1962 torsion bar equipped uh, home heating oil delivery uh, tanker truck. And if you haven't seen the first video in this two part series, do check it out because the truck that's carrying this uh, tanker body is very cool. It's a 62 Chevy C60 torsion bar front suspension truck, uh, only made for a few years, uh, replaced by the leaf springs. The torsion bar, the idea was they were lighter, give a better ride, but they were easily knocked out of alignment. They started eating tires and truckers like CM Dean didn't like buying tires on the front of their rigs or the back of their rigs. So again, check out the first of this two-part video series if you want to see that one. And if you want to see more of these videos, well, subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel.